Now there's a lot of confusion here because people are getting confused between molten hydroxide salt batteries, which are called liquid metal batteries, and with a new technology called molten hydroxide salt storage. So what is the difference between the two? Well, here I'm going to tell you and then show you the biggest battery in the world powered by molten hydroxide salts. Molten hydroxide salt batteries, also known as liquid metal batteries, while once they were a promising technology that looked like it was far off into the future, but they are now actually here. If you ask artificial intelligence like ChatGPT what its thoughts are on this type of battery, it will tell you it's a product that, well, it shows incredible promise, but actually it hasn't reached commercial viability yet. However, ChatGPT would be very, very wrong. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. You know what I love? I love sharing with you commercial technology or battery technology of the future that is here now. It's no longer the future because we are in the future. The future has arrived and the liquid molten salt batteries have officially arrived. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. My name's Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Thailand. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back everyone else. And I just want to say a big thank you to our Patreon supporters. Really couldn't do this, all of this without you. Molten hydroxide salt batteries, also known as liquid metal batteries, are a type of energy storage that operates using liquid electrodes and a molten salt electrolyte. These batteries have gained attention for their potential in massive grid scale energy storage applications due to their high energy density, a long, very, very long cycle life, meaning the long life of the battery and the potential for very low cost manufacturing. Plus, they don't need lithium. The basic design of a molten hydroxide salt battery typically consists of three layers, two liquid metal electrodes separated by a molten salt electrolyte. The electrodes are typically made of low cost abundant metals such as magnesium or antimony. The molten salt electrolyte can be a mixture of various hydroxide salts such as potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, which are maintained at high temperatures, typically above 300 degrees centigrade to keep them in a molten state. And that's where the energy is, the heat. During operation, the battery functions by facilitating the flow of ions between the two electrodes through the molten electrolyte. When a charge is applied to the battery, metal ions from one electrode or anode are oxidized and release electrons, while metal ions from the other electrode, the cathode, are reduced and then they accept the electrons. The movement of ions and electrons generates electrical current. So why are we using them? Why does the world think it needs these kinds of batteries? Here's why. Molten hydroxide salt batteries are, have several potential advantages. They have the potential for high energy density, allowing for efficient energy storage and delivery at a low cost. They also have a long cycle life, meaning they can withstand numerous charge and discharge cycles without significant degradation. In fact, they can last around three times longer than the longest lasting lithium ion batteries. Furthermore, these batteries can be manufactured using abundant and very low cost materials, potentially reducing their cost compared to the other energy storage technologies. And in the past, we all thought, well, that's all well and good, but I mean, commercializing them is a different story. That might never happen. It's just another one of those technologies everyone talks about, another exciting battery thing, but actually they are happening. They're here now. There's already some in deployment today. And the primary purpose of these batteries is to store energy, renewable energy in particular, from the sun and from the wind. Heim Energy has awarded Semco Maritime an engineering procurement and construction contract for services for the 1.6 megawatt hour molten salt storage project in Denmark. The long duration energy storage plant will charge from the grid and be used to demonstrate and test the molten hydroxide storage technology in a practical setting. The so-called MOSS or MOSS demonstration plant in Denmark is the first energy storage plant ever built with molten hydroxide salts. 
It consists of a 1.6 megawatt hour storage unit, which lays the groundwork for future facilities in the gigawatt hour range, says the company that is currently building it. The primary purpose though of this big battery is to display and test the company's molten hydroxide storage technology in a practical real world setting. To show other companies, hey, it can be done. Here it is in operation. You can see how it works. Would you like to place an order? Yes, okay, thank you. Therefore, this demonstration plant will actually provide heat to the district heating system in Denmark, the company explained. Heim's energy storage technology stores electricity from renewable sources in 700 Celsius molten hydroxide salt for up to two weeks. It is based on a two-tank storage design developed for concentrated solar power and Heim's proprietary hydroxide salt corrosion control technology. When charging electricity from renewables is converted into heat through electrical heaters, salt from the cold tank is circulated through the heaters and heated up from 350 degrees Celsius to 700 degrees Celsius, then stored in the hot tank. At the time of discharge, salt from the hot tank circulates to the steam generator where the energy is transferred to water, generating high temperature steam. Steam can be used directly in an industrial process or used to power a turbine and produce electricity and district heating. After that happens, the cooled salt is pumped back into the cold tank until the next charging cycle. The efficiency of the storage system varies according to its use. For industrial heat, the company envisages efficiencies of around 90%, while for cogeneration, the figure is somewhere between 80 to 90%. For power generation alone, the company expects an efficiency of 40%. So when you're using it simply as a battery, it doesn't work anywhere near as efficiently as it does as a heater. This storage technology is actually scalable and a 1.6 gigawatt hour facility with sodium hydroxides will be able to produce power and heat for 100,000 households for 10 hours of discharge. Quite amazing that a battery that's only 1.6 gigawatt hours in size can provide heat for 100,000 homes for 10 hours. You can really see the potential of this technology when you see those numbers. And since sodium hydroxide can be produced at a very low cost from seawater, as a byproduct of chlorine production, the company calculates that this is six times cheaper than standard salts used for storage. Six times cheaper than standard salts makes this one of the cheapest energy storage. However, the company that makes this battery called Heim actually built another battery in 2021 on the Danish island of Bornholm. The company's 10 to 15 megawatt hour molten salt storage facility will be part of a scalable hybrid storage system which will also feature a flywheel storage system provided by Quint Q Energy and recycled lithium-ion batteries supplied by PLS Energy Systems. The project on this Danish island will provide insights on possible repurposing pathways for combined heat and power plants. It will provide heat, power, and ancillary services to the local network. But there's a lot more to come. In fact, this company is about to build out another two gigawatt hours, two gigawatt hour molten salt battery and deploy at least six gigawatt hours of batteries between now and 2030. That's a massive amount of batteries. In fact, that's enough for all of Denmark. This energy storage system, this massive battery in Denmark will be connected to the regular grid and not directly connected to renewable sources. When charging excess electricity, when the price is low, for example, when the battery is charging, it'll send excess electricity from the grid when the price of electricity is low, and the system will then be able to deploy energy when the price is high, making the cost of utilities cheaper for people in Denmark. The point here is, right, that the renewable energy being wasted in the grid, because there's times when it's not being used, will be stored in this massive battery. I reported on this battery technology around about a year ago, and at that time, it seemed as though it may or may not really happen. Well, as you can see, this technology is real, it works, and it will play a significant role in the world's move away from fossil fuels to 100% renewable energy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.